So, um, uh, so what we saw was uh, essentially the kinematics of, uh, uh, of CFT amplitudes in uh, position space and, uh, 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 and the final uh, uh, sort of thing that we saw was uh, we can write Uh, the uh, the general amplitude for an endpoint function uh, of uh, uh, of uh, primary operators uh, we can uh, uh, we, uh, we we can write it in this way uh, up to a factor which takes care of the covariance these u a's are the n into n minus uh, 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 three by two cross ratios, independent cross ratios, uh, uh, and the delta ij obey you sum over j. Uh, uh, so you have uh, uh, the uh, the fact that the symmetry tells you that uh, 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 things must uh, 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 must take this. Uh, a form, so uh, fine. So now uh, let's introduce the Mellin representation uh, uh, of uh, 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 the amplitude. So, uh, uh, so when you have, uh, uh, so normally when in quantum field theory, momentum space is very natural because uh, the uh, 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 because uh, because of the basic fact about Fourier transforms that you learn that if you have a superposition of uh, sines and cosines uh, of harmonic modes, uh, the the Fourier transform is the natural way to pick out uh, the different uh, uh, harmonic uh, uh, frequencies or the modes. Um, uh, but uh, in a conformal field theory, uh, we have. Uh, we have a sort of a power law decomposition. So, uh, uh, so, uh, so when you have things uh, uh, behaving like a power law, uh, then the Mellin transform is the natural one. Uh, uh, picks out the different scaling behaviors. So, so that's. Uh, That's a basic uh, uh, mathematical fact. So let me remind you what the Mellin transform is. So supposing you have a function, uh, uh, you can uh, decompose it in terms of uh, power loss, uh, x to the minus s, uh, uh, at times the Mellin transform. So this, if you have a, a, a function, so there's the sort of the Mellin transform uh, of the function. Uh, and uh, this S is actually a complex uh, a variable which you integrate along a sort of a contour, uh, uh, which is for many most purposes something parallel to the imaginary axis. Uh, uh, so this is the contour C. Uh, um, uh, goes from minus i infinity to uh, plus i infinity. Sometimes you have to adjust it uh, 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 a little bit to uh, uh, to pick up uh, uh, the appropriate poles. Um, so uh, uh, the yeah, it's essentially like a Fourier transform, but but it's just like. The Laplace transform and Fourier transform. So, but this is, uh, uh, but this uh, uh, is uh, is just a um, more natural way to uh, to pick up the uh, the appropriate uh, scaling powers. So you, uh, uh, so uh, yeah. So it's it's just in some ways it's uh, 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 it's a sort of a, uh, this thing. But usually the power law, of this thing is over. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, so this 
uh, written in this way, it will be more manifest that you pick up the, uh, the way. So it, they're all decompositions of the same function space, but it's just more natural to uh, write it in, in this way. Uh, so, uh, so for instance, uh, so this function, if it uh, uh, if it's sufficiently well behaved, then what you do is you essentially close uh, the contour on uh, some side uh, to pick up the appropriate pole. So supposing uh, we have for f tilde of s, uh, which is like one over s minus delta. Uh, 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 so you uh, uh, let's say you have um, uh, and the uh, S plane, um, you have a pole uh, 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 at some point, and then uh, 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 just like you do it, uh, do it for in the Fourier transform. So this is uh, 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 you you close the contour depending on uh, uh, the uh, depending on. Uh, basically x, whether x is greater than 1 or less than 1. Uh, and so for instance, for uh, with, uh, with x greater than 1, you close the contour on the right. And, uh, uh, and you, um, so delta is positive, let's say. Uh, um, uh, uh, so this is, let's say, the pole. Uh, then, uh, uh, then this gives you something like one over x to the delta. Uh, uh, so, uh, so the nice thing about uh, this representation is that uh, the different power laws that you see uh, are associated with sort of the poles of uh, 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 poles of f tilde uh, of s. And um, yeah, so that's what, in fact, for our amplitudes, uh, it will be that this will be a sort of a meromorphic uh, uh, function. And so, uh, but um, uh, yeah, in fact, and then you have to assume it sort of dies off sufficiently well uh, uh, so that you can close the contour at infinity uh, uh, and. Uh, 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 and pick up uh, the poles. So in any case, this is just mathematical transform. Uh, uh, so just to say that it's the natural, it's a natural thing if you want to pick out sort of different power law behavior. So you can see that there's f tilde of s, uh, essentially uh, if your f of x has sort of contributions of different uh, scaling dimensions, uh, then uh, the f tilde of s uh, would pick up, would be sensitive to uh, to that. It's just like a harmonic analysis, but uh, for uh, the Fourier transform. But it's now in terms of the exponents. Uh, so, uh, uh, so this is what uh, it's because of this that Mac uh, defined. So the Mellin representation of a CFT amplitude uh, as defined by Mac basically uses this property uh, and, and he defines So, uh, so he defines it as uh, an integral, so just like uh, over here, an integral, but over now several uh, 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 variables, uh, and I'll define it more precisely. So, so, so what he so we saw uh, that 
the general amplitude depends, uh, has this sort of structure. Uh, uh, so to capture that uh, behavior, so this, uh, uh, to capture that behavior, what Mac introduces are essentially the same, these S's are the Mellon variables, uh, this SIJs, there are, they are conjugate to the XIJs, like over here. And this is the Mellon transform or the Mellon amplitude. And uh, uh, so, uh, so this, uh, 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 so, he, so, uh, so of course there is this factor of gamma uh, of Sij over all i and j, uh, which is sort of put in over here. This could have been absorbed over here, but in a sense, it's a very, it's a matter of convention. But it's a very nice. Uh, it will turn out to be very convenient, especially for large end CFTs, to explicitly take out this factor because the gamma functions has certain poles and those have, uh, 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 have a natural interpretation in the case of uh, uh, large end CFTs. But uh, let me actually say something about this. Uh, uh, so this SIJs actually are not, so you might think there are n into n minus 1 over 2 SIJs over here, but we know that the amplitude really depends on non-trivially on just n into n minus 3 by 2 cross ratios. So actually, these SIJs are not all independent. Uh, they obey, and that's what uh, this the square bracket is uh, essentially defining. Uh, uh, it's saying that you 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 have the the measure has an additional has an additional piece which enforces certain constraints that uh, the Sij sum over j uh, is equal to delta i. This is uh, uh, this is essentially the sort of constraint that takes care of the covariance, just like over here. So there's an overall piece. Uh, uh, so the uh, so this uh, so you had n into n minus. Uh, one by two SIJs, if you just consider the anti-symmetric uh, combinations here, but then minus the n constraints, so these are constraints imposed as delta functions. So, uh, and so the measure, if you wish, uh, is a ds ij. Uh, this is just times various delta functions, n of these delta functions, uh, which uh, uh, which impose uh, uh, these constraints. There are n of these constraints, and so uh, uh, so there are really only n into n minus three by two independent uh, SIJs. Uh, um, uh, which is, of course, exactly the same number as the cross ratios. Uh, so in a sense, you can, though this definition looks a little bit uh, complicated, essentially, and we'll see this explicitly for the case of the four-point function, uh, you can view this as just a Mellon transform of the cross ratios. So there are n into n minus 3 by 2 cross ratios, uh, and you can, uh, you can write them in terms of n into n minus 3 by 2 independent uh, Mellin uh, uh, variables. Uh, and, uh, and, and essentially, the transform is a Mellin transform of those independent variables. And this, will, this is a sort of just a more fancier way of writing it, so as to make it sort of more covariant, or yeah, uh, so that you don't have to sort of uh, pick. It's sort of more. Uh, um, uniform way of writing it in terms of, more symmetric way of writing it in terms of all the uh, n different points. Um, and uh, this gamma function, as I said, is, con is a matter of convention, but it's a very useful one. Uh, so that's um, uh, what uh, uh, the Mellon representation is. Any questions about the definition? Uh, 
so I just want to make one comment. Uh, though Mac himself defined uh, uh, this uh, transform for uh, uh, CFT amplitudes, you can imagine doing the same thing uh, for even a scale invariant field theory. Uh, and all you need to do is, uh, 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 is modify, you can define it exactly in this way. Uh, but all you need to do is modify the measure. So uh, for a scale invariant, but not uh, conformal field theory. Uh, you can define it in exactly the same way, except that this DSIJ, the constraints uh, are, are not as many as you had over here. Uh, it's just a, an overall one which sums over all i and j, which we saw is the sort of overall constraint that we have. Uh, and there you can just view it as the SIJ, uh, therefore there are only n into n minus 1 by 2 minus 1 independent uh, Sij, which are conjugate variables to the, uh, the corresponding ratios. OK, so, uh, uh, so that's anyway just a side comment. Uh, um, so, uh, so you can view these things as conjugate to the cross ratios. In the general conformal invariant case. Um, that's a very nice, uh, so, so this is just a definition. Uh, but there's a very nice, uh, uh, so the, um, uh, uh, there's a suggestive way Uh, uh, to implement uh, the constraints uh, so this these uh, 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 so these n constraints uh, so there are n of these uh, uh, equations there's a nice way to implement them uh, by identifying sij with some kind of Mandelstam-like variables. So uh, imagine them to be uh, some uh, dot products of some fictitious momenta. Uh, so we'll just call them momenta. Uh, uh, but if you wish, you can just think of, uh, given any SIJs, you find uh, momenta pi. Uh, which such that the dot product uh, is equal to SIG, uh, and uh, uh, which satisfies mm, uh, uh, which satisfy. Uh, and so these are not any kind of physical momenta, but uh, 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 but. Uh, uh, But there are some uh, vectors which uh, uh, we demand that they satisfy uh, um, some kind of momentum conservation. So, um, so, uh, so if we, uh, uh, so if we assume. Uh, uh, something like this, and define also pi dot pi to be equal to minus delta i. So uh, the norm uh, uh, to be equal to uh, 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 to, to delta i, uh, then. Uh, uh, the uh, 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 so then this condition uh, 
summation uh, su uh, the summation sij equal to delta i. You, uh, this was j not equal to i, but you can see that this is just the condition that summation bi uh, uh, dot uh, uh, so sum over all j, j equal to 1 to n, because uh, uh, so the delta i piece gives you the, so that's minus uh, of pi dot pi. Uh, uh, so, uh, so this condition is basically the statement uh, that, uh, uh, that these momenta uh, are conserved. So, uh, so if you dot it with any of the vectors, then, uh, 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 then you uh, 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 then you uh, you get zero. Uh, uh, so this constraint can be viewed as uh, uh, following from uh, uh, following from some kind of uh, momentum conservation, uh, 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 provided these momenta obey some kind of on shell condition. So at the moment, these are just sort of words and suggestive uh, uh, terminology, but uh, uh, it, it, this is useful because, uh, uh, firstly, we'll see that they behave very much, these SIJs will behave very much like uh, the corresponding Mandelstam invariants. So if these were actual momenta, these would be what are called Mandelstam invariants, uh, generalizing the S, T, and U that you would, uh, uh, um, that we normally introduce. No, I don't think so. Uh, uh, yeah, so I don't think there's a, uh, there's a, there's any nice way to do that. Uh, in a sense, the, yeah, the, uh, the, the number of degrees of freedom are different. This is sort of a d-dimensional vector with n, n uh, d components and n this thing, and then uh, uh, so it's difficult to write it in terms of the p's, except it, it depends only on the invariants, the p's. Uh, so it's, yeah, uh, there may be some nice way, but. Uh, uh, which was. Right, right. Uh, so uh, there, there may be some uh, some nice way. I thought a little bit about this at some point, but it didn't make any uh, uh, useful headway. Uh, but uh, it seems like an attractive picture to try to uh, 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 to yeah. But, uh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, yeah, maybe it's in D plus one. Yeah. But, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, so uh, so at the moment, I, I will actually only be uh, thinking of these invariants, and uh, 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 and uh, so we can view these conditions uh, on these SIJs as just basically as if these momenta are conserved and uh, uh, and they are they obey. Uh, some on shell uh, uh, quantity uh, and uh, right right there, there must be, i mean it, it's of course on uh, so you're using the scaling behavior uh, uh, here so that part it's some kind of a decomposition in terms of the sort of the eigenvalues of uh, uh, the, uh, so the, so the fact that the SIJs come in is the fact that uh, it's in terms of the eigenvalues, but it, it, I'm not very sure what's the nicest way to say it in, uh, in terms of the full SOD comma two, because the rest, of, normally you label things by just the spin and the dimension. So this is, in some sense, the dimension. It's like behaving. Uh, but uh, uh, what these other more, uh, so, uh, so these are 
some kind of vectors which are sort of, these are sort of invariant. These SIJs, by the way, are invariant under all the special conformal transformations. So uh, maybe there's a way to relate these momenta to some the special conformal transformations, but uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know if, uh, so the best group theoretic language to state it is, I, I, I don't uh, I have anything very more useful to say about that. Uh, so, um, uh, so by the way, I just want to s uh, say one thing again uh, uh, for the, uh, the conformal invariance and the uh, scale invariance. If you just had scale invariance uh, where you had only, you didn't have all these uh, n constraints, you can still talk uh, about the SIJ. So if you just had scale invariance, then you relax the on-shell condition, uh, K I, uh, P i square equal to minus delta i, uh, and just impose, so uh, we just impose uh, one condition, which is something like summation P i square is equal to summation in delta i. Uh, so in many ways, it seems as a conform, at least it will, uh, will appear later when we look at some explicit computations that uh, the conformal invariance, the amplitudes um, uh, for the CFT are sort of on-shell amplitudes, uh, whereas uh, if you relax that condition so that you're sort of off-shell uh, in some ways, then that's more like uh, the amplitudes for a scale invariant theory. Uh, and uh, perhaps that's uh, uh, a useful way to, uh, to view this because, uh, because many of the, uh, uh, so, so in the CFTs, which will be primarily of interest, uh, uh, be, be uh, uh, viewed in terms of these momenta, they are sort of on-shell momenta, but as we know in, uh, in usual quantum field theory, uh, many properties are more manifest when you go uh, off-shell, so that's why this may be a more useful way to, uh, to view this. So, um, okay, so let me look at the special case of the four-point function, and, uh, uh, and because we will be uh, mainly working <coughs> with the four-point function, uh, uh, so let's uh, write down this more explicitly uh, in that particular case. Uh, so, uh, so in the four-point function, it's, uh, uh, we'll define this S variable in, in analogy with our conventional Mandelstam variables as minus P1 plus P2 square. So, and using the fact that P1 square is delta 1, uh, yeah. I will talk about that, but it will be basically a, that there will be exchanged operators, exchange, say, in the four-point function, there will be operators which are being exchanged with that dimension uh, of that. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll be talking about that. Mm. Uh, I, I just wanted to motivate this here by saying that the Mellon transform is a nice way to pick out the different scaling behaviors of one over x to the delta, uh, and that shows up in the poles. So it will be just a more sophisticated version of that uh, that will uh, happen. This is just a multidimensional sort of Mellon transform. So you'll now have poles and different variables and so on. Uh, 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 so we'll illustrate many of these things with the four-point function quite explicitly. So I'm defining here. Uh, uh, so, uh, so basically in the four-point function, so we have n into n minus 3 by 2 is equal to 2 uh, for n equal to 4. Uh, so we had the two cross ratios, u and v. So, um, uh, 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 so if we uh, look at this Mellon amplitude, uh, we have uh, the number of Sij's over here are 6 but there are these four constraints. 
So there are only two independent SIJs, uh, which correspond to the uh, 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 two independent cross ratios, U and uh, v that uh, we had for the four point function. So uh, to isolate just that, I, want, uh, I don't want to work in terms of the SIJs, but I want to write it in terms of two independent variables, which I'll call S and T, which are like the Mandelstam vari invariance for the four point function. So in a four point function, when you do kinematics, uh, you, you define uh, basically these, so if you have P1, P2, P3, P4, then this is what you call the S channel with P1 and P2. This is what you call the T channel with P1 and P3. Uh, and you define uh, uh, these invariants. So, uh, so I'm just defining these combinations, and from the definition, P1 square is delta 1, P2 square is delta 2, uh, and uh, P1 dot P2 is S12. So, uh, so this is what the S variable is. And similarly here, it's delta 1 plus delta 3 minus 2 S13. So the, these are the, I will choose these as the two independent uh, invariants out of all the six different SIJs. So in fact, you can, uh, 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 so, so of course, it follows from this that S12 is, uh, is nothing but uh, uh, half of delta 1 uh, plus delta 2 minus S. S13 is half of And, um, and then there are the four constraint equations, uh, um, these, which if you write them out in full, uh, I'll just do it once. So, uh, this is the case with, the, uh, with i equal to 1, and you sum over the other j's. Similarly, here i is equal to 2, uh, and uh, so these are the four constraint equations on the other S's. Uh, you can, uh, so, uh, uh, so in principle, given S12 and S13 in terms of S and T, if I plug it in here, you can see that I have enough equations to solve for all the other SIJs. So there were six, as we remember, started out, uh, but S12 and S13 uh, we have already expressed in terms of little s and little t. Uh, and so then these other equations basically give you equations to solve for uh, 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 solve for uh, the other variables. I'll just write down the solutions just uh, uh, once again, just so that it's all explicit. Um, So, um, so these are just some linear equations, so the solutions are uh, very straightforward to write down. So you see everything is expressed just in terms of little s and little t as it should be. Uh, there are just two independent kinematic variables. By the way, sometimes you define u, which is equal to minus s plus t, uh, uh, and then things become more symmetric. Uh, um, but uh, uh, but uh, anyway, the, uh, I want to 
right in terms of uh, just two independent variables. Uh, uh, so, which? Which one? Ah, okay. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It, it might be useful to define with a shift. Sometimes, yeah, different people define things with little shifts here and there. Uh, you you could define it that way. I think this is probably the more symmetric definition. Uh, <coughs> yeah. Uh, 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 so, in any case. Um, uh, uh, We can, uh, so if you now uh, plug in, so now all you have to do is plug this in into the, uh, into this formula, uh, uh, and we solve, we've already solved for these constraints by writing things in terms of the S and T, so, uh, uh, so we can write this integral purely as an integral over the two independent variables that remain little s and little t. Uh, so this measure just becomes a usual me uh, one on ds and dt. These are linear equations, so you just get uh, and, uh, the delta functions you've solved for. So, uh, so the... So in this in this particular case, uh, we uh, we can write things in terms of uh, this reduced function uh, of u and v, uh, and, uh, uh, and so when you put this in here, all these extra factors of delta three plus delta four by two, you see there are all these uh, uh, each the form for each of the sij is that there's some combination of deltas and then uh, and then some s and t variable. These combinations of delta you can take outside the integral when they appear over here, and those, in fact, give you uh, some, some particular exponential factor of delta ij's that's sort of a fixed factor. That's the, uh, the covariant piece, which is not very much of interest. So, uh, so basically, what you find is that this A of UV can be written as, as I said, an integral over just the S and T variables, this, uh, uh, this six-dimensional integral, once you've solved for the delta functions, uh, is just the two-dimensional integral uh, on, uh, uh, on this S and T. And, um, uh, and, and then, uh, yeah, and then the nice thing is that if you look at all the remaining factors, so it's just a little bit of algebra, but uh, uh, if you're interested, I would urge you to look through it. Uh, you, if you just substitute for S12, S13, and just uh, write out all the combinations, you'll get things involving X12 square. So you see that... Um, uh, uh, There'll be an x12 square, which will come with an s, uh, and then an x34 square, which will also come with an s, or s by 2. Uh, and then in the denominator will come x23 square with an s, and x4 square, uh, x, uh, 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 x14 square with an s. So it will all combine to just the combination we defined as u. Uh, uh, earlier, uh, and uh, in fact, uh, uh, just u and v, uh, uh, so as it should, of course, uh, so that was the whole idea, that you, had the, you took out the piece that was covariant, and then you got something which just depended on these cross ratios, uh, and, uh, 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 and this u and v, and then there are all these gamma functions, so you can write out all those gamma functions. Uh, I'm writing them out uh, because uh, the, there are these six gamma functions. Uh, now we write them in terms of uh, 
uh, so basically I'm substituting these values of S i j And the reason to write this out in gory detail is that these gamma functions will play a role. And then we can write the Mellin amplitude as the, an amplitude uh, which depends only on these two variables, s and t. Uh, so you see, as I said, uh, basically this Mellin amplitude for the four-point function here uh, is, is essentially the Mellin transform with respect to the cross ratios uh, u and v, up to various uh, sort of conventional no factors of gammas, which have been sort of pulled out uh, uh, explicitly out of this m. Yeah, so there's a specific formula for the delta ij's, which you can write out, like delta 1, 2 is half of delta 1 plus delta 2, and so on. I won't write it all out, but there's a... Uh, and there's a particular uh, uh, covariant factor, but you needn't worry about that very much anymore uh, because the information about the cross ratios is, uh, is now being encoded. Uh, so in, you, you started with an amplitude function of two cross ratios. You're trading it for uh, a function of two Mellin variables, which are suggestively written in terms of these S and T uh, variables. By the way, let me remind you again, since it's not up on the board, uh, the U, the, the conventions for U and V that we are following are uh, so that's why you can see that the uh, the u comes with a power of s by 2 uh, because the x1, the s12 uh, has an s, and in the 1, 3 channel uh, you have t, so that appears in both this, so that's why you get an s plus t uh, over 2. So this is, uh, uh, so this is the, uh, 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 the uh, the kind of uh, uh, form that you have for the four point function. Okay, so uh, uh, so this is uh, to explicitly illustrate that. Uh, but let me let me now talk about some. Let me first list some general properties of these Mellin amplitudes, and we'll illustrate this for this sort of four point function. Uh, at least we'll I'll sort of sketch how it. So we've just made a transform, a change of variables. So how is this useful? It's useful because m of s and t has nice properties. Uh, which are not manifest in the original position space. Uh, uh, Amplitude, so, so M of S T has which firstly they are meromorphic functions uh, of uh, so I'll, uh, I'll first list them all out, and then I'll sort of justify uh, uh, them a little bit more. Uh, so they are meromorphic functions of the S, I, J, or in our case, uh, S and T, uh, the independent uh, S and T. So it's not just, in fact, it's nicer than in momentum space, uh, not just an any analytic functions. They have uh, no branch cuts. This is related to the fact that there are 
no, uh, the spectrum is discrete, uh, and, uh, uh, and so there's no, the branch cuts in normal momentum space come from uh, continuum. And here also you can imagine that when you did this transform, uh, if there were a continuum of dimensions that were contributing here, you would have gotten something like a branch cup. But uh, 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 so they are basically meromorphic functions, and in fact, even their pole structure will be uh, is very nice. So the poles. Uh, uh, and so as I said, no, due to discreteness of spectrum. Uh, of dimensions. So the poles in the different channels So when I say different channels, I mean it's a, in this particular case, it's a function of two complex variables, S and T. You can look at poles in S, poles in T. Uh, and uh, these different channels correspond to uh, dimensions, actually what are more precisely twists, uh, which we'll, we'll see, uh, of operators exchanged in that channel, if you wish, intermediate states. Uh, so, um, so that's, uh, so the poles, uh, the location of the poles uh, have, uh, have, uh, have a meaning, uh, just like uh, in momentum space, except there, there were the masses and so on of the uh, one particle states here. Uh, there are the twists uh, of operators. Uh, and the, yeah, there was a question. So we'll see, the, there will be both primaries and the descendant. There'll be poles corresponding in general to the descendants also. So there'll be a, uh, so for each primary, there'll be a whole c a series of poles. Uh, so the residues, so, uh, so when you have a pole, of course, the residue usually carries some interesting information. Uh, and residues are, related to the lower point correlators. Uh, 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 example, three-point function, for instance, in this particular case. Uh, so this is, again, the kind of factorization uh, that you expect in momentum space amplitudes in ordinary quantum field theory, where when you go near an intermediate particle going on shell, the residues are sort of the, uh, so you have, uh, you have some, and supposing you have an intermediate particle, uh, the, uh, uh, the residues are related to the sort of uh, factorized into the amplitudes for the lower point correlator. Uh, 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 so, so these obey uh, the same property. So, uh, so, uh, so these are. This is about uh, the residues and the poles, and the the channel dualities. are, uh, that is, the fact that you can factorize the OPE in different channels. In S channel or T channel. Uh, are simply 
manifest as SD exchange, etc. Uh, so, yeah. So, I mean, uh, yeah, uh, it's just, uh, yeah. So, so, in fact, the nice thing is about the, that if you consider large NCFTs, so where multi-trace correlators factorize, So, so the dimensions, uh, uh, so example, so therefore, double trace operators like O1, O2 have dimension delta 1 plus delta. Uh, so, uh, so in the in large n limits, where uh, uh, in the large n CFTs in which uh, the single trace operators uh, essentially uh, you can view it as a sort of free theory of uh, of these single trace operators. Um, uh, the uh, the additional gamma functions, which seem like some sort of general junk floating along with it, all these extra gamma functions, very naturally, the additional gamma functions take care of uh, of the uh, uh, contributions of of such operators, meaning the M of ST is purely uh, built from the single trace. Uh, it purely captures the single trace operator. So you don't have to introduce additional poles uh, so all the poles on the intermediate channel are all of single trace operators. Uh, it's not the poles that are there. Surely the OPE has uh, contributions from the double trace operators, but those are poles that are poles of these gamma functions. And the residues of those gamma functions uh, capture the uh, factorization properties for the double trace operators. So in a sense, you can sort of, in the large n limit, kinematically take into account the presence of the double trace operators by some trivial multiplicative factor uh, and focus on just the single particle uh, sector in this M of ST. This is very convenient because if you want to, uh, for instance, look at the dual string scattering, uh, so if, as I began the lectures, we want to use this to understand uh, uh, whether are all large N CFTs dual to perturbative string theories. In, per in string theory, you're looking at single particle scattering. At, uh, so the large N CFT is, uh, limit is one where you're looking at perturbative uh, scattering, let's say at tree level, uh, uh, of uh, single particle operators. And that's completely captured by uh, uh, this. Uh, this M of ST, you don't have to worry about all the uh, multi-particle or the multi-trace contributions that are, uh, so it's a nice way to disentangle the multi-trace contributions in the OP. There's a, there will be a disconnected piece, yeah. So that's, there's a trivial piece. at some U by V to the delta or something like that. Uh, 
that's a kind of a forward delta function you kind of get, yeah. Uh, that's in fact, you can almost, yeah, you can see that that's just a, like a delta function. Uh, <laughs> so, so there's the disconnected piece, but this is the piece which gives you the interacting part of the. <laughs> so this, uh, so this is what makes it very natural to try to look at the. So it's this is so all the all these properties are very reminiscent of what you would expect for a string scattering amplitude, as uh, we have been discussing. And uh, uh, so the consistency conditions uh, uh, for um, uh, for these uh, are the bootstrap conditions are like the conditions you would impose for a consistent string scattering amplitude. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what the additional poles will give you. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, you, you, will, uh, you, uh, you will have uh, the ones with different twists as well, uh, including the different symmetry. So I'll talk about the, the states, intermediate states with spin, but those, those will be included as well. So finally, the last uh, nice property, uh, uh, which I think uh, it makes uh, this thing nice, is that, so as I said, they are all very reminiscent of string scattering amplitude. Uh, but uh, in fact, in um, sort of a large radius, limit of ABS amplitudes, they go over to flat space. Uh, scattering amplitudes and uh, and in fact the pi dot these do become the sij do go over to sort of the mandelstam invariance in flat space up to sort of a proportionality factor uh, so uh, uh, so there it's uh, uh, so there, you, you can view these as on-shell. This becomes indeed an on-shell condition. Uh, and uh, 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 in the language of the um, uh, flat space um, scattering uh, and, uh, the, uh, and, this, and the M of ST uh, uh, is essentially up to a sort of a convolution, it is the flat space scattering amplitude, as was shown by, well, this was something, I haven't been giving references very well, but uh, after the original paper of Mac, uh, Penedonis was the uh, person who sort of uh, uh, tried to use this for, uh, and conjectured a precise form for uh, taking this limit, and later I think uh, it was sort of put on a firmer footing by Fitzpatrick and Kaplan. Mm. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I mean, these don't care so much about the signature because uh, these Mandelstam invariants you can view as complex functions, which you can rotate from Euclidean signature to, uh, uh, to Minkowski signature. Uh, I mean, the, uh, the, the amplitudes are analytic functions of, uh, uh, of, this, of these Mandelstam invariants, like the flat space scattering amplitudes are. So, uh, so it doesn't care so much about whether it's 
Euclidean or uh, Minkowski. Yeah, you, uh, so you're generally considering these as generally complex numbers, uh, which uh, you can go to a Euclidean or a, a Minkowskian sort of uh, signature, and then you can take SIJ to obey the appropriate. So there'll be some physical region of, uh, for, Yeah, as it stands, it's just a complex number. SIJ, I'm just representing. So PIs are some complex momenta, if you wish. But there'll be some, in, in Minkowski space, there's some triangle or something in the Mandelstam invariant space. There's a physical region, uh, which is the sort of uh, for physical momenta. But, uh, but the amplitudes are invariant, and you can continue them beyond those uh, 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 to unphysical momenta. Euclidean momenta, any general complex momenta. <coughs> so all these features, how many minutes do I have? <laughs> OK, I, I will just, uh, 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 so I, I'll just, uh, um, I, I, OK, I, I'll just uh, say a couple of words and then stop. So uh, all these properties essentially follow from the OPE. Uh, uh, from the OPE, it's factorization, and so on. Uh, 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 so I'll, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, so let me just maybe make, so if I have, I'll continue later, but you have uh, in the four-point function, uh, we know that we can um, split it into, I mean, we can write it uh, in, uh, in terms of, uh, uh, so now we look at only the single trace operators here, uh, uh, and we will have uh, the OPE generally containing terms so this is x1 2 okay. and then you can have some number of derivatives uh, So, so the general form of the OPE, when you have some spin L operator, you get some, uh, uh, some pieces over in the numerator, which are like that. And then the denominator uh, comes with a power, uh, which is something like delta 1 plus delta 2 minus delta divided, uh, plus 2n plus L. 2n is the number of these scalar descendants. L is the number of these the spin. Uh, so basically, uh, I mean, I'll, I'll elaborate next time more, but uh, you can see already that this scaling behavior by our general, these things around the Mellin transform, picking, picking out the appropriate power laws, you can see that it will pick out uh, a pole, and in fact, this delta 1 plus delta 2 in the S channel is already taken into account in our definition of uh, S12, so the, the S variable will have a pole at S equal to delta plus 2N minus L. Uh, and so this is uh, what is uh, the twist uh, uh, plus 2N. Uh, uh, so the twist is dimension minus the spin. Uh, and so you can already see that there will be uh, poles that will uh, come. Uh, from, uh, so basically the fact that there are meromorphic functions will follow from the fact that this OPE is a convergent series which, uh, and then each of the terms will give rise to poles and the, uh, the poles will have values uh, which will be these powers which correspond to the twist uh, plus, and there's a whole series, n goes from 
zero to infinity. So there will be a whole series which corresponds to the uh, descendants as well. Uh, and the residues will be related to the lower point functions, uh, as I said over here, uh, and so on. So, uh, so I'll elaborate on this a little bit more next time. Uh, uh, but basically, these properties all follow from uh, uh, the fact that there is a convergent OPE in the uh, CFT, which has uh, all these properties. So, it's, uh, so this M of ST captures these things in this nice way uh, 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 instead of the more sort of the messy OPE expression. Uh, uh, this, uh, uh, and the, uh, this is a more efficient way of capturing the same information. Okay, let me stop here. Thanks. <laughs>